just a good old boy. <laughs> well, we're spar bailing today. Got the accumulator out. We're trying it. I got the preservative in, but we're not needing it right now. This here's dry enough. It don't need it. But there's the accumulator. Everything seems to be working all right. He's dumped three packs and haven't had an issue yet. All the springs seem to be working fine. The turn, turning and everything else. We'll see how it does dumping. This is a good little test field here. It's not a big one. It's probably going to be the last I get the square bell. The Bermuda's just getting too far gone and dying. Let him loop around. He likes three bales. And then we'll uh, see what it'll do. I had another field I was going to bail yesterday, but the, the preservative applicator had, it somehow or another, it had trash in that tank. I don't know if it come through the vent cap on the tank. I might have to do get a different top to go on it. Maybe it's not vented. And uh, see, but it kept plugging up. And I had to flush the entire system this morning, the tank and everything, to get it straightened out. There's one. There's two. Let's see what she does. Trip that time. Closed. I'll let him keep bailing and we'll come back and see what it's doing afterwards. It's working perfect now. Um, Don't really see anything wrong with it so far everything's tripping fine everything's working fine you see the whys Stick a camera on there and let y'all ride with it. Eighteen forty, they eating it. Rolling right along. He can pick up 
a gear from there. He's bailing at five mile an hour, maybe a little over it. Just judging by the way he's looking at it, he's at least running five miles an hour. He could actually pick up a gear because the flakes in those bales are perfect. It's, the baler's not struggling at all uh, as far as the halo going through it. Because once you start to push them and overfill them, you'll start to notice the flakes will uh, be rougher on the sides. The uniforms of the bales will start to change. They'll kind of have a, a flake like that. He probably sucked the wad in or something. It'll just be a little rougher on the sides than, it, it, uh, than those are and uh they they're coming out perfect and he's running that fast i mean those are pretty decent sized windrows um to be running uh, that fast i mean that's that's not a small windrow right there by any means let's look at it from the front view see how big it is The augers aren't completely covered. He can put a little bit more or pick up a little bit of speed. That's where the Dyna 4 and that 5400 I have would shine because uh, you could pick it up just a, like a half a mile an hour or, or just not a, like 0 0.2 miles an hour with it. Whereas with this tractor here is a manual transmission. You, it does have a splitter, but you still can't get it within like that low it's nearly a mile an hour change when you change gears or so um so that's one thing it would help it a little bit what oh yep that'll run today that'll run somebody's day right there comes nothing they're tight too yep pick it up one string those tight heavy bales them bales away i'd say they were around 50 pound 50 pound bales be what they be which is perfect i have earlier this year we paid them a lot heavier than that and didn't realize it because i hadn't got out and actually picked and handled enough of these by hand to know that there was really a difference in them other than just grabbing them just like that to see if the strains is tight i took some hay to a lady um and she had some three three strain alfalfa bales um sitting there that were as long as my my squire bales and they were lighter than our squire bales were with dry hay in them that's how much hay we was putting in them bales i told kept telling dad i said man these bales are, are feel heavy with his grapple loading them and when we was bailing them he, he said oh they're fine that's the right way i like them and i said okay he just kept running and they, that baler there will pack some hay in a bale of hay if you want it to. And we're running, uh, a lot of people probably wonder what knot strength twine are you using. Uh, it's Titan twine is what I run. I run tight. I was running large square bale twine, uh, twine uh, last year for part of the year. And, uh, this, and then uh, we changed over uh it's it's more for small square bells but it's still a heavy knot strength twine it's 210 uh knot strength twine and it's the blue i like the blue they look pretty uh, the win believe it or not women that buy hay they care about what color the hay strings are i've had them personally tell me that they bought my hay before because they thought this uh, when they started because they thought the strings were pretty <laughs> So, as crazy as that sounds, I used to run orange, and uh, we went to blue, and I just had went back, and, and a lot of times when you get the heavier knot strength twine, it will be blue, um, 
so that way you can tell because they'll color code it a little different for the knot strength so that way you know which uh knot strength it is um orange is generally lighter and uh i think it's green i run some green for a while it was like 180 190 um it done a good job i didn't really have any issues but i like 210 if you catch one wrong with a, with a grapple or something picking them up or anything they won't break the strings won't break and you don't have to deal with any busted bales handling them or nothing like that and uh they just there's less issues with it so that's what we run especially with that the way it feeds into that accumulator twisting and stuff um if you run a lower knot strength twine uh, under probably like 180 or so that sometimes it can break the twine if you get it in too tight of a turn uh turning that thing and it will pop one of the strings so i've always run even back when i run the old ford uh baler that was built by long i run then 180 or better this because with that maxillator uh if you caught the bales wrong and they and it happened as you driving along and hang the ground wrong sometimes and it roll the bale over underneath one of those bars it would pop the strings and bust the bales if you it maybe one or two a day but it was still aggravating um and that was why i went to the heavier knot strength and i like it a lot better and as far as the knots it's making it's making good knots you can see them nice clean cut good tails on them good tied knots no issues they're both even and exactly where they should be on each bale you're getting good uh good cuts here's the the tails that it's cut off good clean cuts the knives are clean starting to get a little bit of a fray might need to uh change the knives out this fall or this uh, winter for next spring just to keep from dealing with issues because knives don't cost that much they're cheap and knives will cost you cause you a lot of troubles and you don't even realize it with knotters um just because it doesn't cut perfectly so that's that's uh one thing i've got to probably do this thing i'm gonna have to i haven't really ever had to go through this baler yet like uh like i used to the 1837 because we all got it halfway through the season last year and only bailed half a season with a brand new baler i mean i went over checked the timing and stuff but as far as doing anything the knotters i didn't do anything to them and uh i think uh this off season i'm probably gonna have to really go through it i'm not gonna check any of the roller bearings and stuff like that other than maybe the knife tolerances in the chamber and stuff like that like i normally do they should be fine with that baler being new i wouldn't think there'd be any issues with them and it hasn't got enough hay through it yet to need to do anything with those um but i've got to uh check sharp probably sharper than knives they're probably gonna be due for sharpening um pull them out if they're not bad i may just take that little dremel and go in there and sharpen the edges a little bit um on those and try and uh just do it that way because i used to do that some with that 37 and it worked good and check the timing uh those balers over time as the chain loosens up they will get out of time um a little bit not much and it can make a little bit of a difference on the end line so I always check the timing every year and go through everything. Um, for the ground up, I go through everything on them. Um, so that'd be interesting. It'll be the first time I've done that this all spring. So there'll be videos coming on that. Um, but I've got several videos on that old 1837 from pulling the plunger to putting new um, bearings on it and rollers and everything there to doing it working on the knotters completely pretty well completely redo with the knotters new twine discs new knives new new uh, twine holders uh just uh bill hooks replaced the bill hooks in it done a lot of things that baler was in hell of a good shape when i got it and i'll be honest i like this 40 it does a heck of a job as y'all can see but that 37 
when I let go, let it go, it would nearly keep pace with that baler right there. Um, and it had thousands of bales through it. Um, and it was still in very good condition for the age it was and the amount of hay it had through it. Uh, but it would keep pace really with that 40. Uh, now when you got in super thick hay, like we're in a lot of times, uh, that was when you really could tell the difference in, in it and this one. It would not, it would have a lot harder time eating it. Um, and this one here, it'll, it'll eat it. Uh, now it, it has its breaking point like anything, um, but it, it would probably that one there eats hay better than it would in heavy hay now hay like this you could run right along hex to one another and never even tell the difference that other one would eat it just as really to me as good as this one you might be able to tell the bales might be a little bit rougher on the sides but it would run that fast in hay like this and uh, it did a very good job i don't know who ended up with that baler but they got a good baler if i had um if I had it a little bit different setup here and I needed two balers, I would have bought that baler back and run two. Uh, if I had the setup I'd like to have eventually where I want to get to, we would have, um, I would have bought it back and kept using it. The only thing it needed was it needed new pickup chains. That was the only thing I hadn't ever done to it. But you can rebuild it until it gets by. That's it. It's just and my mic died um what i was gonna say is is you can if you can find some of the older end lines you can rebuild them for not that much um if you know what you're doing and you have some experience with knotters in particular um everything else is pretty straightforward and easy on these and just uh, some kind of mechanical experience you can rebuild one of these for not that much um as long as everything you can get everything set right and the timing all right and the knotters all set right um they you can make an old one run just as good as one of these new ones there's to me they're easy to, to work on and rebuild uh these inlines are uh, i have redone the 37 um like i was talking about and that it, there's no reason why you can't and you're probably wondering well why did you buy a new one well uh, as much hay as I'm bailing as much as I intend on bailing in the future the next few years it it just made more sense for me to buy a new one because of that uh, because we're planning on bailing so much hay now if you didn't bail a lot of hay say every year maybe five six thousand bales a year um is what you're putting up and you wanted a good good baler to do it um you can pick some of these up for not that bad a price these inlines that's got some hay through them and redo one is my point and have you a really good baler then uh for a decent price um but that's why we went with getting the new one uh if i could have found a if if say we did go to a two baler eventually um operation which i don't know if we will uh anyway in the near future but if we did go that route i probably would try to find another uh, 1839 or 1840 used that's got decent amount of hay through it and redo it because it would save me some change um but for the main baler i like to have a new one um but being we bail so much but if i did get a second one it i wouldn't be against buying a used one and redoing it um but anyway i uh, hope you all enjoyed this video accumulators work uh perfectly uh i have got another field coming we bailed it today um and that'll be coming soon got some more round bailing videos and some other stuff coming um but uh, in between now and then um, so thanks for watching please comment rate and subscribe and we'll see you next time